Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Happy Hanukkah to all. I want to remind you next week I will be out of town. I'm flying to Israel on Monday night, and I will be returning Monday morning, but I'm not sure that I'll be back in town uh, Monday evening. So the next two weeks, we are going to be canceling classes. Last week, just a summary, I believe we are holding on page 74. Last week, we spoke about father and mother, chokhmah, wisdom. Uh, Bina, chokhmah is the father. Bina is what? How do you say? Understanding is the, is the mother. Chokhmah is the seed. Bina is the one who develops. In ideas, the rabbi is talking about developing a relationship with God. I have shared with you the same, that the same and different level apply between relationship between partners, husband, wife, parents, etc. The first thing, and in the Chabad Hasidism, this is a foundation, the true love and respect does not happen without prior contemplation. Otherwise, as we'll discover, it's called imagination. We go through the motions, but it's not real. Real connection with God. Establishing a real connection starts from here, from the brains, and then it goes to the heart. There are creatures that nat naturally have emotions, like animals, dogs, cats, all kinds of, every animal expresses emotions. We are inborn or raised with certain emotions that you always say thank you, and you love your siblings, and you respect the, your grandparents, but this is not real emotions, the true real emotions. The rabbi, uh, one of the commentators compares that to an emotion of a child before he's born versus real emotions here in life. When something hurts the baby before it's born, we all know he does express emotions. That's why the kick, there is all kinds of, they hear music, there are, there, there are emotions by, by the last trimester for sure. But those emotions are incomparable to the emotions of a child after they are born. Once a child is uncomfortable, he starts crying. If you giggle him, he starts laughing. The emotions are real. The same applies to emotions that we go through when our, they are naturally or we were raised that way versus emotions that we wake or create on our own. They are solid and real. The other ones is called an imagination in comparison to the real emotions. And therefore, it must go through the process of Chokhmah and Bina. Chokhmah and Bina represent also love and fear. Father and mother or son and daughter when it comes to love and fear because love emotions are created through Chokhmah and Bina who are the father and mother. Love is represented by a son Fear is daughter. I'm not going to go through pol being politically correct, but this is the way it is. And in addition, fear, daughter, comes before son. As one, it will apply later on. Just is important to understand that. So when we come to connect, I'm going to use the example of a, a spouse. I'm dating somebody. The respect must be there before the love. If I fall in love with somebody, but there is no respect, it will lead to a very negative outcome because then it's all about how I feel and what makes me feel good. No regard for the other's feeling and desires and needs. But what if I was raised that way? And I'm told before, you must respect, you must show that you care. The respect is the, so to say, the ground. And then you build on the respect, the love, then it's a true love. Therefore, when we talk about waking up love and fear for God, the true best way is to first create the respect and fear of God, and only then creating the love of God. I we have I have read last week very quick because I don't think it's necessary to get deeper because it's not going to be um, uh, too, too much of help. But what the rabbi is saying is that in order for us to connect, to establish a connection with God, we need to contemplate how great God is, 
by looking around and seeing how beautiful the universe, just different colors of flowers, the smell of the flowers, the shape of flowers, different animals, looking at the fish, looking at the nature, simple nature, rocks, colors, weight, how long are they there? And realizing that everything is a purpose and yet God with his infinite ability cared to have me here because he gave me a job. That creates when we contemplate and contemplate over and over and the rabbi is talking about, uh, we're gonna read it again, but the rabbi is talking about in his nefesh, meaning to be con contemplating with all my faculties, concentrating fully, and also in the timing, devoting time to con contemplation, it will create great awe and respect for God, after which love will be created. Why is it? So there are two points here. Number one is that, as I said, if the foundation is re respect and then love, the love will come in a very healthy way. In addition, I think we spoke about that people who had connected to God through love, what happens is they lose themselves and they can give up their life. We talked about four people who enter into the orchard, only Rabbi Akiva entered in peace and left in peace. But if you create a relationship with respect and awe, then the love will not let you lose yourself because you realize God has a mission for me. And for God's sake, I'm not allowed to lose myself. So if we start properly with daughter first and son second, that's why the Talmud teaches, by the way, this answers a lot of comments that are mentioned in Jewish law that people sometimes don't, don't know why and there is no there is no other way to explain. The Jewish tradition tells us that a parents, parents who are blessed with children and they had a daughter first, it's a good sign for the future sons. But trila siman yafele banim. That's the word is. You heard that before? No? Huh? No, nothing to do. It says that if someone is born, has a, a daughter first, they have a daughter first, it's a good sign that the sons that will come afterwards will be very good children. There is a famous rabbi, the following is a, a joke, or, but it's a true story. The name is the Chofetz Chaim. The Chofetz Chaim is Rabbi Yisrael Meir and of, of Rad, Rad, Radin. He lived maybe 125 years ago in Poland. He was a very well-known rabbi. He put in many, many books. I believe he died at the age of 99. Very, very wealthy. I'm sorry, very healthy person. Very well-known. He was uh, not a chassid, but he had an attitude of a chassid. He had only daughters born mm -hmm. to him. So after his fifth mm -hmm. daughter was born, usually you go to synagogue and say, I had a daughter. They said, no. They say, it's a good sign for the next sign. <laughs> so he said, enough with the signs. I want the real thing. <laughs> but uh, it says that a, a good sign for us, for for boys to be good boys. Some say it's the reason, the reason is because when you have a daughter first, she will help the mother raise the children. Boys don't care. <laughs> so they, they, but when you have a daughter first, if there is a son born later, there will be two people caring for him, the mother and the sister. But regardless, it's a known fact that in Jewish tradition we say, but tchila, if a daughter is born first, simania felebanim, it's a good sign for the future sons. According to Kabbalah, it's obviously because there are, if you have but, which represent, I told you, respect and awe, it's the Gvura, it's the restriction. It's a good sign for love, the love that come after. Now, if you reverse, as I told you, it's not a healthy situation. Number one, when you have no respect, the relationship is not going to be helpful. In addition, as we talk about love for God, the yearning is so strong that there is nothing holding back. But if you have, so somebody can lose themselves. But if you have first a um, respect for God, then the love that was built afterwards is based on the respect, is built on the respect, mm -hmm. and therefore it will have a good, good connection. I am going to read in on page 75, second paragraph. 
this is how we, this is what we have studied thus far in general. For even one who is wise by utilizing his faculty of Chokhmah and understanding by exercising his faculty of Vina in the greatness of the blessed angel, mm -hmm. yet unless he applies his dad and Oh, no, no, no. We uh, we didn't study it. We're going to go back to 74. I we did that. Uh, I'm sorry, 73. I am so sorry. Okay. We are 73, second paragraph. So intense can one's love become that the soul risks being consumed by the fiery flames of its love and of God and totally live in the body. In fact, were one not to forestall this danger and contain the great love, he would indeed expire, but the restraints, but, but he restrains himself so that his soul will remain clothed in his body, the only condition in which it is possible for him to fulfill his God-given mission. So therefore, if we have respect and awe for God, the love will not take us away from the body. And there have been many people, who, there is a term for it called in Kabbalah, klota nefesh, or the nefesh, the soul, yearns to leave the body, connect to God, which is a grave sin. It's a grave sin because we disobey God. So if you have first respect and awe for God, the love that is developed is come measured because we know that we have a mission. This love and thirst is derived from the element of fire in the divine soul, as students of natural science affirms. And so it is in Eitzchayim, the element of fire is in the heart, while the source of the element of water and moisture is in the brain. So here is another point the Rabbi makes. Any emotions that stem from fire, it's from the heart. The heart is, is heated up. Any emotions that's from coolness and cold and calculated, it's from the brains. So a thinker is cold. People who think they like to seclude themselves. They need quiet time just because it's cold. People who are very excited and they love everybody, they have to show off, they have to talk, they have to jump, they have to make noise. You have different types of people, extrovert and in, 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 uh, introvert. The introvert, they are, they are introvert because the brains is the source of the water overpowers them. The element of water is called, it's not real liquid, I'm not sure that's what we're talking about. It's the source of water. Remember, we spoke about the four elements. The source of the element of fire comes from the heart. And therefore, someone who's extrovert is more about emotions than intellect. And therefore, as explains in Eitzchayim portal 50, the source of the element of water is the level of Chokhmah, which is called the water of the divine soul. So Chokhmah is from the brains, emotions are from the heart, because emotions are coming from fire, from the element of fire. Chokhmah intellects come from, this, from the source of water. In as much as the heart is the seat of the emotions of warmth, we say that it is the abode of the element of fire. In contrast, the brain, being the seat of cold intellect, calm and measured intelligence, is the source of the element of water. One can readily observe this by comparing the demeanor of an emotional person to that of an intellectual. And that's the point I just make so too. We are now on page 74. With the intellect and emotions of the divine soul, the heat and passion of one's love of God is expressed in the heart, ultimately leading him to expire in klota nefesh, in yearning and connecting to God and living the soul. The mind, however, remains cool. This capacity of the intellect for calm appraisal of, this, of a situation leads to it to comprehend that God's intent is that the soul remains clothed in the body so that it will be able to fulfill the Torah and, the, and its commandments. This realization calls the fiery order uh, outdoor of the heart and thus prevents the soul from actually expanding in Klota Nefesh. What the rabbi is saying is when someone de develops yearning and connecting to God love, 
It's like a fiery that can consume the person and the soul expires from the body, leaves the body. But if it starts from the brains, remember we said that intellect is, should be the source of true emotions. The brains is cold. It's like water that you pour on the fire. And you remind yourself, I'm here because God wants me here. And therefore, I'm not allowed to let my soul leave the body. And this is, by the way, in relationship, it's the same thing. Sometimes we get in love and therefore we want to express ourselves, but the recipient is not interested. They're not in the mood. They, are not, they're not, they don't love it. And that's not what they want. If we have respect that is developed first and it came from the brains, therefore respecting him first, we question whether what we do is the right thing or not, because we need to see how it is perceived by the recipient. The Alter Rebbe's discussion of the birth of Midot from the intellect has thus far been centered on two emotions, love and fear of God. What of the others? What about number three, four, five, six, seven? Says the Rebbe, the rest of the remaining five Midot uh, spheres are all offshoots and derivatives of fear and love. And obviously they too are born of Chochmah and Bina, as is explained elsewhere. And those are to the right, are chesed, giving and kindness. And those are to the left, are, are strictness and about me, creating separation between me and you. So the next one would be Netzach, chesed, gvura, tiferet, is in realm, Netzach, victory. I want to show off. I want to show you how special I am. I want to be winning every game. You know, the desire. some people are very competitive. It's part, it's, an, it's an, a subdivision. It's a sub subcategory of kindness. The other one is hold. Hold is beauty. I want to show that I'm beautiful and I'm attractive. So it's all about me as opposed as compared to everybody else. Then you have Yesod, Netzachod, Yesod. Yesod is foundation to re reproduce and continue the seed. So again, it's kindness. It's the offshoot of kindness. And the last one is Malchut. Malchut and the... Netzachod Yesod, Malchut. Malchut is royalty, uh, as we'll, we'll discuss later. We'll get to it later. All the above explains why Chochma and Bina are called the father and mother of the Midot. For it is through the contemplation exercised by Chochma and Bina that the Midot are born. Chokhmah and Bina are the father and mother that create all the emotions. Chokhmah is called the father, just as the, uh, the drop of semen which derives from the father's brain comprises, in, comprises in, concent in concentrated and concealed form all the organs of the child's body. Similarly, the seminal point of Chokhmah contains in a concealed matter all the details of an idea as explained above. And just as it is the mother who reveals the child's organs from their concealed state and brings them to a state of completion. Similarly, Bina reveals, expands, and elucidates the concepts, the concept of all its details. So Chokhmah and Bina are like father and mother. But what of that? There is a third capacity in the intellect called that, the third of the intellectual faculties. That too, as explained earlier, is a mother and source of Midot, it's also considered a mother. What does it contribute to their birth? This issue is now addressed. So now the conclusion of ch chapter three, the rabbi is gonna talk about the third part of the brain. So you have right and left, you have Chokhmah, father, Bina, mother. Now you need to know what that is. Says the Rebbe, Da'at, whose etymology may be found in the person Adam knew Eve, implies attachment and union. Da'at, the word da'at, it's like to know, no knowledge. The first time Adam and Eve cohabitated and a child was born, the Torah says, Adam yada, Adam knew Eve, his wife, knew, knowledge is what that, but he knew her in such a deep level, on a such a deep level that it created a child. As applied to that of the divine soul, this means binding one's mind with a very firm, strong bond and firmly fixing one's thought on the greatness of the blessed Ain Sof, 
without diverting his mind from it. That is, the subject matter conceived in Chochmah and developed in Bina is absorbed in the mind by concentration, which is that. So that once you have an idea or someone gave you an idea, develop it to details, it's not enough. It's unreal yet. What that will do is contemplating and concentrating until I have it very, very clear in my mind. Let me explain you an example. It's a, an example that one of the Rebbe's, I don't believe it's a Chabad Rebbe who said it, and it's a well-known story that I was told as a child. In Russia, many, many times, the uh, people, not everybody knew how to read and write. There were no schools. The children were helping in the farm and the household chores. There was a very wealthy man that did not know how to read and write. His name, we call him Yeshuvnik. Yeshuvnik means a villager. Yeshuv in Hebrew is a village, a villager that somehow the good luck shined upon him and he became very successful. So he decided, unlike his children, he want, unlike himself, he wants his children to study Torah. So what does he do? He hires a melamed, a teacher of children to spend six months a year, six months, and he will pay him very uh, generously, and the the and the and the melamed and the teacher will raise will teach the children. The father has no time; he's busy in his office. But his children at least will know how to read and write and learn Torah. And uh, for Passover one month, and for Rosh Hashanah another month, he would go back home to spend with his family, of course, with all the money that he earned. One day, the mailman delivered a letter to this villager. Being that he didn't know how to read, he called the teacher and he says to him, you can read, you can read Russian, right? He said, sure. So can you read me the letter? And as he started reading the letter, the letter was an announcement to let the villager know that his father, who lives in a very far place, had just died. While he was reading it, the farmer, the villagers, fainted from the pain of learning that his father is gone. What, but the teacher who was reading it, he was unmoved. He kept reading, and he completed reading the whole letter. Nothing changed. When the wife is seeing it, she said, I, I don't understand. The reason for my husband's uh, fainting is due to the news of the letter. Who knows better what's written in the letter? My husband or the teacher? Of course, the teacher, because he can read and he knows well what's written there. How come my husband painted and this man was unfaithed? Nothing happened to him. And the explanation is that one had, both of them had Chochmah and Bina. Both of them got the letter, which is Chochmah, and then they open it up and read and they know all the details. He was in a car accident, the doctor tried, they operated and he died on the operating table. So they, they have all the details. Chochma and Bina alone is not enough. But the, the villager, it was his own father. And therefore, this is that. That brought it into a 3D experience. It's something you see, you live through, and it affects you. The teacher, on the other hand, he read it and he knows it very well. He can repeat the words word by word of the letter. It did not affect him. His emotions were not moved. He didn't get angry. He wasn't crying. He didn't get upset. Not because he did not have Chochmah and Bina, because he had a better Chochmah and Bina of that letter than the villager. What he was lacking is that. And this is the component that makes it all happen. So if I want to have a true emotion, Chochma and Bina is just an introduction, the tools, but the real stuff is in that. That is the one that makes it real. That is considered also a second mother. We call it mother too, because without that, you have a very good, clear understanding of, of the matter, but it does not create true emotions. Did I make myself clear? This connection to the knowledge. That is part of, is a third faculty in the intelligence. As you see the and above, you have Chochmah Binadat. 
right, left, and underneath is that. So in other words, the faculties of the brain are three. Chokhmah is on the right. Bina is on the left. Chokhmah has the potential. It's like in the letter, it's the envelope containing the letter. Bina, not everybody can read, right? The, the villager couldn't read. So you need to have someone with the intelligence to be able to read. Then you have Bina. Bina is actually reading it and knowing all the details. What day, what hour, who, whose fault it is, how many times they try to revive him. But taken from there, it does not affect the reader because it's not his father. If it's not his father, he has nothing to do with that. However, when it comes to the villager, he didn't even read the letter. He didn't even receive the letter. The letter went straight to the teacher, but he had that. That, it means that it's real. This is my father. Because it's my father, it will wake the emotions that he got so upset that he fainted. And he was very, very upset. You couldn't talk to him for a while simply because it had such an impact on him. Dick, you had a question? Where and how and why does it fit in the schematic is the mother of Edo? Uh, it creates you know. what happened to the man. He got upset. Yeah. Why do the reader didn't get as upset? Because the reader did, did not develop any emotions. He had Chochma and Bina, but true emotions can be developed only when you have that. So if it's that. my father, even though somebody else reads it, and I have no clue what the letter is, is written because I can't read it. But when I hear the news and it's my, not my, my father, I will be a, I will affect, it will affect my emotions. I'm going to use another example. And there is many, many examples. Away from personal. Yeah, that. personal is that. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Personal is that. I'm trying to drive that point in different variations. <laughs> and I'm going to use another example of personal is the right word. The Gemara in the sections of the Talmud that deals with possession or disputes the Gemara gives us different scenarios. What might one come up with an excuse or a reason for doing or not doing something? For example, he lied. He can explain he didn't know. He was on a sleep. He drank before. There's always good, good reasons. The Gemara brings scenarios of a servant, a maid, who had never opened a book in her life, and she will come up with different way to this to excuse herself or to demand to walk out free because of what lack of or something that the master did and the rabbis once asked the hasidic masters how is it possible that the rabbis brains those scenarios and suggestions are created in the rabbis brains that lived 2000 years ago how is it possible that a maid who had never been to read a book, has no idea about intelligence, should be able to come up with those suggestions. These are suggestions the rabbi used to prove one point or another, but it means that the maid had to use those excuses or those explanations. It's so far, even from a, a, a knowledgeable person who studied Torah all day, that they need those rabbis to come up with these ingenious ideas. And mm -hmm. the rabbi, the rabbis explain, as Sheila said, for the maid, it's personal. It's about her freedom. She'll be able to dig so far deeper to the mindset and come up with different scenarios and explanations that only the masters can think of. And the only reason is because it's personal. It's And therefore, she'll be able to come up with those ideas. We will discover later on that that actually drives also back. It goes backwards, as you say, personal, and create the Chochmah Mina, and that's the example I just used. In other words, I want to stick to the idea of that right now. Chochmah and Bina, if you have only the, what do you call Chochmah? Wisdom and knowledge? Chokhmah and Bina, wisdom and knowledge alone, developing an idea has no impact on the human heart, will not create emotions. True love, to fall in love with somebody, no matter how much talk there is and how much intelligent, and I know it's the right thing for me and it's very healthy for me, 
it's not going to work. You know what that does? We contemplate and realize and so deep into our essence that we realize this is who I am. This is what will make me a good person. And by doing so, it creates the connection. It creates a new relationship that can create emotions. So if the doctor tells somebody, there's many, as I said, many examples. I'm going to use another example. You got to be checked by a doctor, physicals, and the doctor says no more smoking, no more drinking. Chocolate is, I'm sorry, sugar is out. <laughs> And you say, but, but, I, you know, but, but, but. I was, as a child, I used to play with fire. I, I don't know, I was mesmerized by fire. So, huh? So my parents didn't know what to do. Whatever, I'm just showing you to a simple example. My parents didn't know what to do because my parents never raised a hand, thank God, but they were they was they were worried because I would go under the building where we lived and light fire because nobody can cr can crawl there and nobody can see except the smoke and the, the smell and all the neighbors will come screaming. So they decided to take me to a psychologist, which was in the 70s was a big no-no. But I went to a psychologist, a lady, and she said to my father, and mother upon hearing the situation my father and mother said we don't know how to stop so she told them on the way home there is a hospital i spoke today about the hospital a sufferer of, on the way to the town where i live you have to go by this this used to be the biggest hospital in israel and she says to my father and mother take him to the burn unit <laughs> and show him i was seven years old show him what happens to people who play with matches and my father turned to me and says, no, 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 okay, we're going. It's just two, one stop before we go off one stop early, and then we take the bus one more stop. I told my father, no, I don't want to. I promise you no more matches. <laughs> just the thought to see people who had been burned had such an impact that they really made me stop. What's the difference? I knew full well what the outcome can be, but Chochmah and Bina does not affect your emotions and definitely not your action. But when you have that, that is bonding, a bond. That's why knowing each other between a husband and wife is considered to know, to know her, to know him, and then a child is conceived because it's a bond that is very real. How do we know it's real? Because a something is moved from an object that is real can be transformed transferred from the father to the mother and that's a sign that it's real otherwise it's not real and that's therefore there is a potential for a child and this is what that to the best of my ability is Sheila calls it make it personal or make it so vivid uh, after great contemplation that it becomes real. yes would you say that um that it's necessary to have that for true repentance? In other words, it has to be so real. Or you can't just think for... Repentance must be an honest uh, decision. But that, of course, that is a, is, a, is a much higher level, much greater, much deeper. But Chochmah and Bina alone, uh, contemplating and realizing that what I did or what was done is wrong, and therefore I will not do it again, and I'm asking forgiveness, I think it should be sufficient. Let's continue. For even one who is wise... by utilizing his faculty of Chochmah and understanding by exercising his faculty of Bina in the greatness of the blessed and so yet unless he applies his dad and fixes his thought firmly and diligently firmly and diligently talking about my essence my soul and my timing and his understanding of God's greatness he will not produce in his soul true fear and love but only vain fancies. He will only imagine that he fears God and loves him. True fear and love are attained only by way of that. 
Thus, that provides the substance and vitality of the midot, of the emotions, and is therefore termed a mother of the midot, another parent side by side with Chokhmah and Bina. So Chokhmah and Bina, that's why that is in the middle between them, but below them, because it's not a separate category, it's another mother. It comprises chesed and gvura, that is to say love with those other midot that are, is, is its offshoots and fear with its offshoots. So we completed chapter three. Second chapter, we talked about the fact that emotions, through true emotions are created only through intelligence for contemplation. The best way to do, you have a father and mother of the emotions and they're chokhmah and bina, the best way is you have respect and awe, and then you have love. And we also discovered that true, not imaginary emotions are created through that. If there is no that, if you don't make it personal, if you don't contemplate on it over and over and over, it's imaginary. And therefore the first wind that blows over that will fall apart. Chapter four. Can we continue a little bit more of chapter four? The rabbi, just an introduction. Now the rabbi, these are each chapter, the rabbi is talking about different items. The second chapter was about two souls, one soul, what came first. Second chapter, and then we ended up about the power of the parents that give the to their children. Third chapter, we talked about the relationship between emotions and intelligence. Now the rabbi is getting into the clothing the dressing of the soul. There are three, and they are thought, speech, and action. Soul is very spiritual, but it dresses up to express itself and connect with other in one of those three garments. Thought is continuously, you can never live in this world without machshava, without thought, that's why when we dream that other faculties are asleep, are gone, thought process is still around. If either we remember afterwards what we dreamt or not, it doesn't matter, but thought is always there. Second one is speech. Speech can be done, can be ceased from speaking. I don't have to speak all day long, but if I want to, I speak. However, you can reflect, you can see by the way I speak, what mood, how my emotions, how my soul is. If I speak passionately, you know I'm feeling something. If I'm angry, you will hear it. If I'm laughing, you will know that I'm in a good mood. Emotions are expressed through speech. And finally, action. Action is doing what I want to do, expressing myself. A talented artist can put on paint on a canvas. A handyman can create a table. They can be totally separated and always last. They will be around even after the person is gone because they are, it's a garment the soul expresses itself through that is totally removed from the soul. Speech, I have to be speaking continuously if I want to express my soul. As soon as I stop speaking, as soon as I stop expressing myself, I don't speak anymore. Thought is internal. And therefore, it must be constant. This is the introduction, and we'll see how it applies to the soul. Chapter 4. In addition to its 10 faculties discussed in Chapter 3, every divine soul, Nefesh Elokit, possesses three garments. I believe not only godly soul, but animal soul are also is also possessing of the same three garments, However, the rabbi chooses to use the, to to concentrate on the godly soul because he wants to motivate us to use it in the in the positive way. But those garments exist also in the animal soul. The soul possesses three auxiliary powers, which are its instruments of expression. Like garments, they can be done or shed at will. When the soul utilizes any of these three powers, it is clothed in them. When it does not use them, it is divested of them. Also, just as garments give expression to the wearer's beauty and importance, so too, when the soul done, dons and utilizes these garments, its intellect and emotions find expression 
So when you go golfing, you dress one way. You go to a wedding, you get you dress differently. You come to study, you dress one way. You go to the beach, you dress differently. You go to a funeral, you dress another way. The garments, the garments will put us in the right mood. And in one dresses very fancy, very nicely, very beautifully, not only will impress others, as the, as, as the commentators explain, but also changes the soul itself. If I'm dressed with uh, proper garments, it will put me uh, in a different mood than if I'm just, you know, with a bathing suit out in the beach. It's a whole different attitude that affects the soul. Why? Because that, in nature, in life, that's the way it is. The same is with the soul. The soul will have three, three levels of garments and they will affect the soul itself. Now, the soul can, can dress with those garments or the, the old undress, take it away, take it off. I don't want now to speak. I don't want to do anything. And I will let my mind go off without thinking properly. Yes. Excuse me, when you mentioned animals, I, mean, I said, no, I did not, I, I did, if I said animal, I meant to say animal soul. He's talking, he's mentioning godly soul. The rabbi is using the godly soul example, but it's also for the animal soul. They, the garments, are thought, speech, and action, as they find expression in the 600 commandments of the Torah. And the Alter Rebbe now goes on to explain how the divine soul expresses itself through these three garments. For when a person actively fulfills all the precepts which require physical action, for example, when he done the tefillin or fulfills the commandment of tzitzit, etc., and with the power, with his power of speech, he occupies himself in expounding all the 613 commandments and the laws governing their uh, fulfillments. He's studying with words verbally. At that point, that is, the person's speech is immersed in the study of Torah, which includes the exposition of the commandments. For example, tracted brachot, tracted called brachot blessings, deal with the commandments and the laws of blessings. Tracted Shabbat, deals with the commandments and laws of Shabbat observance, etc. And with his power of thought, he comprehends all the, the that he is capable of understanding in the Pardes, that is the four levels of Torah, which are, we're going to find out in a moment. Here is, it is Pardes, by the way, in Hebrew is orchard, but Pardes is made out of four letters, Pei, Reish, Dalet, Sama, and they comprise four different ways of explaining the Torah. The word pardes, whose literal meaning is orchard, is here used as an acronym of the four Hebrew words, pshat, remez, drush, and sod, meaning respectively plain sense, intimation, analytical exposition, and esoteric meaning. The four levels of scriptural interpretation. Every word of the Torah can be interpreted in four different levels. Simple one, the hinting, how do you expand? Why one is before the other? Why you read about it in plural, not in singular? And then you have the secret part, the Kabbalah part. Then all of his soul, 613 organs, are clothed in the 613 commandments of the Torah. So when he is using the garments of the soul to study and to act and to think and contemplate and understand the Torah, what happens is he's dressed fully every part of the soul, which has 613 parts, just like the body has 613, 248 veins and 365 uh, sinews. The same is the soul is made out of 613 parts. All of them will be enclosed with the proper gar holy garments. Just as the human body consists of 248 organs and 365 blood vessels, together it's corresponding to the Torah's 248 positive commandments and 365 prohibitive commandments, 613 in all. The soul similarly comprises 613 organs, the spiritual counter counterpart of the 613 bodily organs. 
each organ corresponding to a specific commandment, when through its three garments, thought, speech, and action, the soul embraces all 613 commandments, then all 613 organs of the soul are enclosed in all the 613 commandments, each organ of the soul in its related commandment. Did you understand what we just read? Not so much. Let me explain. The human body is made out of 248 organs and 600 and, 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 300, and 365 uh, blood org vessels. Together, they comprise a total of 613 parts. The soul corresponding to the body also is made out of 613 channels. Channels, we'll use the word. When someone uses the garments of the soul, which are action, speech, and thought, to serve God, he is enclosing, he, enclo he is dressing all the parts of the soul in holy garments and makes the soul very holy. That, that's what the rabbi is saying. Um, I just want to say the Kabbalah goes much deeper and just for those, those of us who are a little bit advanced, I'm going to share that the 365 negative commandments, prohibitions, correspond to 365 blood vessels. How many days to a year? 365, 365 right? The sun, sun cycle, is, the moon is depends in Jewish... You have 383, 385, 363, 365, but the sun is 365. So each commandment, each prohibitive commandment correspond to one day of the year. That explains us that some, sometimes we have the reason for the prohibitive commandments and we know what day they happen based on the, on the details. And let me use one example we just said in the Torah last week. Anybody heard of the fight that Jacob had with the minister of Esau, an angel, and then he asked him to release, and he said no. So he touched him on the sciatic nerve uh, on the side here, and he made him limp in the morning, right? And then he left. <clears throat> this is, therefore, the Torah concludes, therefore, we do not eat that part of the animal. Only sheep have that. It's a part of fat. It's a fat that's a, above a, a um, bone. And it is forbidden. It's called chelev. Chelev is type of fat. It's not regular fat. The rest of the fat of the animal is kosher. But that part next to that bone is forbidden. Anybody is familiar with that prohibition? Huh? Gida Nashe. Right? Even, Ivan, do you know that? Okay, it's on the back. Not the, on the back. Huh? Only sheep. Uh, not ox, not, 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 not ox, and not goat. No, okay, let's continue here. <laughs> this is a very sad event because the angel of Isa almost overcame Jacob. Not only almost, he herded him. And therefore, we are forbidden from eating that to remember that. You know what day it happened? Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av. That's why it's a very sad day because in history always there have been in conflict in, uh, when there is a conflict between Esau, Rome, Greece with the Jewish people. That day they were very successful. They destroyed both temples on that day of Tisha B'Av. So according to the Zohar, when you do each prohibition on what day? By the way, Pesach also. I don't remember which what prohibition, but I, I knew Tisha B'Av. This one because I started two weeks ago. Uh, last week, not two weeks ago even, uh, because it happened on Tisha B'Av, I'm sorry, that day from the 365 days correspond to that commandments of the 365 prohibitions. Therefore, Tisha B'Av is a very sad day. Therefore, in history, there always it was like touching the part of the body of the Jewish people, Israel, Jacob, his name is Israel, the Jewish people, and, and causing them to limp. To causing them to lose and be not, not be able to walk properly. So, Tisha, so there are good prohibitions, there are very sad, difficult prohibitions, and they all correspond with different days of the year. Now, you have a, to a total of 613 commandments. Nobody can fulfill 613 commandments because you have to be male, you have to be female, you have to divorce your wife, you have to be marrying your, your brother's wife who did not have children, you have to be a Kohen and a Levi and a king. 
there is all kinds of commandments that were given to a specific person. But as long as someone is dev devoted himself to studying Torah and fulfilling God's commandments, he is considered as if he fulfilled all 613 commandments. How do we know that? Jacob, remember you told that to me last week? When Jacob is going back from Laban, from his father-in-law, and meet Esau, his brother, he tells him, I kept all the 613 commandments. And all the commentators, including the holy uh, man over here, ask, how is it possible I kept 613 commandments? There is 25%, more, 30% of the commandments cannot be fulfilled outside of the Holy Land. Tithing, tithe, uh, uh, Orla, the first three years, sabbatical, jubilee, all the sacrifices. It's 30, at least 33% of the commandments. You can't do it outside of Israel. Then you have, as I said, you have to be a king. You have to divorce your wife. Jacob never divorced anybody. It's a mitzvah to give a get. You, to marry your, brother, your, your brother's wife if, he, if the brother died childless. You have to be, if you're, if you're firstborn, you have a commandment. If you're a coin, Jacob wasn't a coin. If you're a Levi, Jacob wasn't a Levi. If you're a king, you're not a king. What's going on here? So the rabbi is explained. As long as it's Jacob in his state fulfilled all the commandments, he is considered as if he fulfilled all 613 commandments. I'm going to show you a story. I showed it many years ago. I was witness to the story. I was very close to the story. There was an Israeli in the Israeli consulate that um, his child, I'm giving you it's a very the gist of it. His child became ill, fell ill. And the yeshiva boy that used to go every Friday to the Israeli consulate to done to fill in with them, uh, this was in 1983. I was one of those group. I did not go to, I went on another street. Uh, he saw that this man is very sad. And he says to him, why don't you write to the Rebbe? The Rebbe is a holy man asking for a blessing because the doctors already gave up on that child. So the man wrote to the Rebbe and the Rebbe answered, um, uh, no, so the yeshiva boy told the man, write to the Rebbe for a blessing, but offer, it's a two-way street in the universe. You can't just ask. Say, I'm accepting upon myself to do a mitzvah in honor of the health of my child. So the man said, true. What do you suggest? You, what mitzvah? And the yeshiva boy says, it's not me, it's you. You have to choose a mitzvah. So the man, so the man says, give me, give me idea. I'm a secular Jew. I don't know. So he said, you can keep Shabbat. Oh, too much for me. <laughs> you can keep kosher. I can't. I, I enjoy all the restaurants in Manhattan. So he said, well, how about putting on tefillin? Uh, he says, uh, I'll keep uh, tefillin uh, once in a while. He says, no, no, you have to keep one mitzvah. Put one mitzvah. So he said, I'll put mezuzot and all the doors in my house. Not in one door, all the doors. So you fulfill a mitzvah. So he wrote to the Rebbe. Uh, and I'm willing to accept it upon myself to add in my connection to God by keeping a mitzvah, uh, a mezuzah. This uh, was on Friday, uh, right after Shabbat, a uh, secretary calls the yeshiva and says the Rebbe responded to that letter, which is not usual. And the Rebbe says to go back to that man and tell him that he needs to accept upon himself to be a fully observant Jew, meaning he has to keep everything. And that yeshiva boy came, I remember he says, I, I don't know what to do, but the, if the Rebbe says you have to do it. So he goes back Sunday afternoon, takes the train to Empire State Building, that's where the Israeli consulate is. And he goes up there and he goes to the Israeli consulate and he meets with the guy, this officer, this uh, official. He says, the Rebbe responded, the Rebbe gave an answer. So he said, what did the Rebbe So he's, he just read from the text, he wrote it down, he says, the Rebbe says, if you want your daughter to be healthy, you must accept to be fully observant Jew. So the Israeli man, the, this guy, turned to the to the chassi, to the boy, and he says, you know, you give the finger, they take the whole hand. <laughs> so the yeshiva boy said, write to the Rebbe, how you feel, that it's too much. That's what he meant. He can't change his lifestyle. He's, he's a very secular Jew. He doesn't keep Shabbat. He doesn't keep kosher. He doesn't celebrate all the holidays. Mm -hmm. So he wrote to the Rebbe that uh, Beck, that he will do anything for his daughter, but he knows that if he'll commit himself, it's unreal. You won't be able to. It's like fooling yourself. 
And he says to the Rebbe, I'm asking you for a blessing because I've tried and I think that, that uh, committing to a mezuzah, all my dose is an upgrade. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that, uh, you know, I'm doing the best as I can. So the Rebbe responded the following. The Rebbe says to the secretary to tell the yeshiva boy to explain that man that when the, what the Rebbe meant is he does not, should not do any more than what he committed. Because as long as he realizes that that's where he stops, that's, that, that's not where he should stop. And the Rebbe told the yeshiva boy, the secretary to explain the yeshiva boy, that when someone has changed and connected to God just by putting every mezuzah on the door and doing it, which he didn't do before, he is fully com connected to God. And it's considered like he's doing everything God is asking. Because, ask, because making him do more is not going to last and it's it's not going to it's going to hurt however he needs to know that once in a while he should revisit the situation and say to himself do i do enough and then move on the man moved back to israel he had a mission for three four years his daughter, so he accepted it all heartedly and his daughter got cured miracle the, he moved back to Israel. He is living in Israel, very well-known man, and uh, his daughter got cured, and today she's a mother to children, and she comes to speak in public occasions, inspiring people to be connected to God, because you can connect to God by s serving God with all 613 commandments, as long as you do today something you didn't do yesterday. As long as So comparing you to me is unreal. It's not the way God is was asking from us. However, realizing that in Judaism, you got to upgrade is the way you do. And this is what the rabbi is saying here. The garments of the soul, when you involve in study of Torah, and you think about Torah study to understand it, and you involve in the proper action based on what you study, you say the blessings properly, you celebrate Shabbat properly, what happens is all 613 commandments all 613 channels of the soul are enclosed in the proper garments and make the person fully, wholly connected to God. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to we stop in today. We will continue God dwelling in three weeks. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Thank you.